what person on this planet doesn't like to receive compliments? Maybe you worked really hard on picking out your outfit that day. Maybe you went to the salon and got yourself a nice haircut. Or maybe you've been working out a little bit more than usual. When people notice us put time and effort into our appearance and how we look, we love to receive compliments and show that we're doing a good job. That's gonna be the focus of today's video. Guys, I am just so excited to make this video. I've made a lot of others before this, even though I feel like this is such a popular type of video in the fragrance community, mostly because I wanted to make sure this list was an absolute bomb winner, 10 out of 10 list. That was gonna be a bunch of great fragrances that are going to get you noticed, going to get you compliments, and are going to be quality for the money you spend on them. I'm really proud of my choices. I think we nailed this list today, guys, and I'm so excited to share to you my top 10 most complimented men's fragrances. Not only are these great fragrances by themselves anyway, but these are ones that have been tried, true, and tested and are going to get you great reactions from friends, family members, and especially members of the opposite sex. These are ones that you're not gonna have to worry if people are going to like because they fit the mass appeal label pretty well. Now don't take that the wrong way. They're very, very good even though they're mass appealing. These will get you compliments and these are going to get you noticed and I'm excited to share the 10 I chose for this list. So let's jump right into it. Now, before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know, none of these are in any kind of particular order. These are just 10 that I've spent some time making sure were 10 that I was confident in recommending to you guys, and I'm just gonna be grabbing them and we're gonna be talking about them as I see them. So none of these are better than whether they're at the 10 spot or the one, but for our first spot, we are going to be talking about Angel Men, and this right here is Pure Havan. Angel Men Pure Havan. This is for all of you tobacco lovers out there. Not only tobacco lovers, but especially sweet tobacco lovers. This has a honey, sticky, sweet, cherry tobacco vibe, and it projects super well. This is also a beast mode fragrance as far as projection, longevity. It has that original Angel Men DNA with all of those sweet, uh, it tones down the tar notes a little bit from the original Angel Men DNA. This is my favorite of the Angel Men line, Pure Havan. Uh, if you enjoy tobacco-esque fragrances, but maybe you're not too into those bold, spicy, peppery tobaccos, but you want a sweet tobacco, Pure Havana is fantastic. I get so many compliments with this, guys, especially if you are into that sort of sweet tobacco type of thing. This is an absolutely fantastic pick. Our number one spot goes to Angelman Pure Havan. Rolling into the number two spot, we are going to be choosing an award-winning, well-known DNA that is going to be pleasing, that is going to get you compliments. I like this choice a lot too because it's super duper versatile. We are talking about the one, the only, Bleu de Chanel. This, in particular, is the Eau de Parfum. Um, the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum bring some controversy on which is right for you and which is more liked and more complimented. The Eau de Parfum, it has that fantastic grapefruit right at the front. Uh, grapefruit, incense, a little bit of pepper, uh, a little bit of musk. Uh, it makes the Eau de Parfum a choice for me. I prefer this to the Eau de Toilette. The performance is not significantly better for me than the Eau de Toilette, so you're really safe choosing both. But the Eau de Parfum, I, I love the citrus of this. I'm gonna take the cap off and smell it because I just absolutely adore this stuff. Uh, Bleu de Chanel, you're not gonna smell super unique, guys. This is a DNA that's been around for a long time. It is a little dated, uh, but it is award-winning, and it's it's been around for so long, and so many women have smelled it. Sometimes you don't need to smell so unique if all you're after is compliments, and all you're after is having the people who you're around in a day-to-day -day basis like the way you smell. And if that's what you're shooting for, and you don't wanna be super bold, and you don't wanna be super risky, reach for Bleu de Chanel. You just can't miss with it, guys. The Eau de Parfum is my recommendation. Check out the Eau de Toilette too. I'd stay away from the Parfum. Not so much that it's bad or that it's low quality, but I don't think it differentiates itself enough from the Eau de Parfum to warrant purchasing it. Eau de Parfum is my choice. Check them both out. Number two spot, get yourself some compliments, get yourself some love by wearing Bleu de Chanel. As we roll into the number three spot, we're going to be stepping into the world of a little bit of higher end designer fragrances with one of my favorite Tom Fords. We have got Tom Ford Fleur de Portofino. This one here is a very, very interesting uh, Tom Ford if you're familiar with their signature line. Some of your more popular ones being Tobacco Vanille. 
uh, being oud wood, tobacco, uh, heavy, very masculine, very bold scents. This is so different in that aspect. I still think it's bold for a freshie, but it's so much more inoffensive, so much more easy to wear. This is an Eau de Parfum, as all Tom Ford's, at least the hefty majority, I believe, are long-lasting. This is a summertime, beachy, floral shirt out in the hot, hot weather. It is a relief from all of that heat because it is so refreshing. You have jasmine, you have orange blossom. This can be a little difficult to pull off for some guys. This is not a jeans and a t-shirt walking down Main Street on a June day kind of fragrance. This is, you're in Miami with your fiance, you are out in Costa Rica on your honeymoon, or you are somewhere there, it's very, very warm. It's a little upscale. This one needs to be upscaled and it needs to be worn a little bit more in a high class situation. It can be worn anywhere, but it's going to pull those compliments when people are like, oh my gosh, you got your gentleman out there wearing their aqua de joes and their other aquatic everyday, very popular men's fragrances. And you're going to pull up to the bar. You're going to sit down at a restaurant or you're going to be somewhere walking down boardwalk and they're going to smell this and it is going to set you apart from every other guy. Uh, I would take a look at the whole blue bottle line from, uh, I'm not sure if it has a particular name or not, uh, the, the signature line uh, is the black bottles, while your more floral, your more aquatic, your more fruity notes that are present in your Tom Fords are going to look like this bottle, um, but Costa Zara, uh, Mandarino de Portofino, uh, there are several from this line that I like, Fleur de Portofino is by far my favorite. And I get complimented on this one in the summertime, guys. This is my go-to vacation scent. I adore it. It is so different. It is so powerful, yet stays so fresh and so clean. And jasmine is an interesting note compared to your ambergris, compared to your bergamot, compared to your musk that are very popular in men's fragrances. Uh, Orange Blossom and Jasmine set you apart with this one. Tom Ford, we've got Fleur de Portofino for the number three spot. Okay, guys, after our number three spot, we're coming back down to earth to the world of your more affordable designers. Uh, we're just going to be going right into this one, guys. Dior Sauvage. Let's all just give an appreciation for what I would consider one of the most important fragrances to ever be released in the last 10 years from the 2010s to the now new year of 2020. It's hard to argue that there's any more fragrance out there as far as its overwhelming reach uh, as that this is important as this. Sure, you can talk about other releases and other brands that are groundbreaking, but as well-rounded, as versatile, as fragrant, as projector heavy, that project very well, that are as complimented, that are as worn, that are as sold, that are as popular as Dior Sauvage. I just, I think it's impossible. Dior Sauvage is on nightstands, is in medicine cabinets, is on top of dressers of men all over the US, all over the world, no matter where you're watching this from. So it has just about every benefit going into it, except the fact that you're gonna smell like a million other guys. And like I said before, really with Blue de Chanel, there's nothing wrong with picking a winning DNA and sticking with it. Just, if you wanna go with something that works, go with something that works, and that's Dior Sauvage. Uh, you may remind females or people in your life of other people who smell like it, but if they smell fantastic, who cares? If your goal is to smell unique, if your goal is to stand out, stay far away. This does not work for that type of situation, but it does do fantastic if you want people to just say, oh my gosh, they're gonna walk by you and take a double take. Who, who is wearing that? Who smells so good? Uh, but if you tell them I'm wearing Dior Sauvage, there's a hefty chance that they're like, oh, okay, my uncle, husband, dad, brother wears Dior Sauvage. Uh, this is the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette projects like a beast, the Eau de Parfum and Parfum. You can have your opinion on those. Uh, they're popular as well. I stick with the original old Eau de Toilette for this one. Dior Sauvage, guys. Number four spot. Can't beat it. Get compliments. Get noticed. Uh, just don't expect to smell unique, guys. But Dior Sauvage, number four spot. Number five spot, guys, we are talking about one of my personal favorites. This is a wintertime bomb. I would really not recommend wearing this in the summertime or in any kind of hot weather, but the colder it gets, the better this performs. And you can't say that about a lot of fragrances, but this one fits that narrative perfectly. We have got Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Extreme. Now, I had a hard time picking between Spice Bomb and Spice Bomb Extreme for this list. I went with Extreme because I think it's a little bit more wearable and I think it's a little bit more compliment-esque, a little bit more compliment-worthy. 
the vanilla and the introduction of cinnamon into this fragrance make it so easy for women to enjoy. Um, even my fiance, she finds spice bomb sometimes just a little bit too much, a little bit too powerful, a little bit too overbearing. It's good and it has a lot of great qualities, don't get me wrong, but I find spice bomb extreme even though it's bold and even though it's a strong choice, it's still a little bit safer than your spice bomb by Victor and Rolf. Spice Bomb Extreme, I think it's toned down a little from the Spice Bomb, which is odd, adding the word extreme at the end. Um, but the cinnamon, the vanilla, it's so good for date nights, guys. This is a cuddle up. They are gonna wanna get close to you, Fregan. So easy on the trigger. Winter time is when this is gonna perform for you. Winter time is when this should be warm. Um, winter time is when this should be warm, whether it be cool, at least, or hopefully cold weather. If you wear this on a 90 degree day out jogging, people, do that around people you dislike, then you will uh, do great because this is gonna choke people out, guys. You gotta be careful with this one. But Spice Bomb Extreme, you're just gonna get absolute compliments pulled left and right, guys. It is so good. It makes the list easily, and it is one of my favorites for a winter date night fragrance. So Spice Bomb Extreme. We are rolling right into number six with another obvious choice. One that is just well proven, well, We're on to the number six spot, guys, with another obvious choice that's easy to pull compliments with. It's tried, tested, true, and it's not gonna surprise anybody, but the reason we're making this list is because you want compliments, right? And if you want compliments, you reach for Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal. You could also kind of substitute this list with Ultra Male. They are both compliment monsters. They're compliment beasts. There's no doubt about it. I like Le Mal better than Ultra Male simply because this is so much easier it's not so much more easy to wear, but the word I described as way more versatile. Ultra male in the office, ultra male maybe to a family gathering might have people scratching their heads as to why you are this fruity, loud, flirty, sexy smelling guy right now when you're in those kind of situations. I would have no problem, almost dropped the bottle, wearing Lamal to the office, wearing Lamal to a low stakes, casual situation. Uh, this is an easy grab and go. This is a dumb reach. This is an everyday wear. If you're looking for a signature scent, be prepared to share the same signature scent with countless men from the 90s until now. Um, but there's still nothing wrong with this as your signature scent. Lamal is complimented by me daily when I wear it. Or I'm sorry, I receive compliments from it daily when I wear it. Um, so easy to pull compliments with, guys. Jean-Paul Gaultier. I'd pick this over Ultra Male, Lamal, smell like every other guy since the 1990s, but get compliments like every other guy since the 1990s. Number six spot, guys. We are on to number seven with Yves Saint Laurent. This is La Nuit de Lome. No surprise here, no surprise here. For those of you who don't know, La Nuit de Lome has been a powerhouse date night, evening wear kind of cool weather bomb for a long time. It is just known to pull compliments. Women love this one. I have yet to have a woman tell me that I don't smell fantastic wearing this. If I ask, not every woman I pass in my entire life that I wear this says I smell good. Um, but I've never gotten a bad reaction to Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de Lome. It's not going to happen. It's so good, guys. Cardamom, vanilla, uh, bergamot, the tried and true notes. It's so good. It's always going to be good. It's timeless. Projection-wise, this is like a cuddle-up scent. Different from Spice Bomb in that it's going to pull people towards you. When people get close, they're going to smell this and they're going to notice how great it is. Projection, longevity could be better, used to be better. I'm not going to get into that. This is not a review. This is just simply stuff that will get you compliments. But if you are going on a date where you're going to be sitting in a close booth, say at a restaurant, you're going to the movie theater, you know you're having a lady come over to your house and you guys are going to cuddle up and watch a movie, pop on Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de Lome, and watch the magic happen. Getting towards the end of our list here, we are at the number eight spot, and this is a fairly new release, and it's one that's gotten a ton of hype, and in my opinion, guys, the hype is absolutely real. We've got another Yves Saint Laurent. This is on a completely different level. This is Yves Saint Laurent Y, and this is the Eau de Parfum version. The reason I say that is because it's very important. Well, with the Dior Sauvage and with the Bleu de Chanel, I don't find it so important to make sure you pick a particular formulation. This one, I absolutely recommend you pick up the Eau de Parfum. Again, not a review list or anything like that, but it's well known that the Eau de Toilette version of this smelled great, had incredibly poor performance and longevity, like really, really poor. The Eau de Parfum stepped their game up, and it is a projection, 
Uh, I, would, I would venture to call it a projection beast. Maybe not so much as some of the others on this list, but it is a it is going to be a compliment magnet. It's a compliment beast. Uh, it's just so likable. Everything about this is fresh. It's clean. It's sweet. It's sexy. It can be worn in the office. This is one of my favorite Office 2020 fragrances. All 2020. Wear this in the office. All 2020. Wear this on dates. It's hyper versatile. Yves Saint Laurent, why? Make sure you pick up the EDP, guys. It's becoming easier and easier to find on discounters, on Facebook groups, your various places to get it a little cheaper than retail. I would still not recommend paying retail for this. It's good, but it will come down in price. It will become easier to find. Yves Saint Laurent, why? Get the other parfum. <clears throat> Our second to last fragrance on the most complimented list goes to none other than Prada Lhomme. Guys, this has gotten so much talk, so much hype over the last couple of years. I don't gotta say much about it. If you wanna smell like a fantastic aftershave, a fantastic bar of soap, just so clean, so ultra fresh, inoffensive, likable Prada Lhomme. It's, it's as simple as that. I This might be my most or second most complimented of this entire list. I just cannot seem to stop having people tell me I smell fantastic when I wear Prada Lhomme. It is just so good because it's not that crazy, because it's so clean, it's so fresh. Uh, you have the iris note, which is something that is not all that common. So you will also smell a little unique, not crazy unique. It's, it's a freshy, it's a soapy, fresh, great fragrance. Um, but Prada Lhomme, I've been to gas stations. I've been to weird places where men behind the counter have been like, I was going to pick up such and such fragrance this weekend, or I was waiting to save up for this, but dude, what are you wearing? I want that. Um, that's what's so cool about this. It's not only complimented by ladies, like, because it's sexy, but it's so clean and nice. Guys want to know, like, man, you just, you just smell good. What are you, what are you wearing? Uh, Prada Lhomme, get yourself a bottle, guys. Forget any of the Prada Luna Rosa line. Take that with a grain of salt. Those are, there are some good fragrances in there, but I'm going to pick Prada Lhomme every time. Get it, get it, get it. Prada Lhomme, number nine spot. All right, guys, thanks so much for sticking with me towards the end of this list. We are going to wrap up the number 10 spot with a powerhouse. You know it. You probably saw it was going to be on this list. You probably knew and thought it was going to be on this list, and I'm not here to disappoint you guys. For our number 10 most complimented, we have got Creed Aventus. What to say about Creed Aventus that hasn't already been said? I think that's pretty much an impossible task. Pineapple, black currant, smoky birch, apple, vanilla... Uh, it's complex, it's well-known. It's, it's an interesting concept because it's kind of in a league all of its own. Creed Aventus is so popular with fragrance heads and fragrance community people that you'd think it's so popular and why would you wear this? You're gonna smell like a million other people. Um, but only those guys, you gotta keep in mind the fragrance community makes up like a two to three percent of people who really buy fragrances. Um, you're gonna smell unique by wearing Creed Aventus, don't get me wrong. Maybe not hyper unique, maybe not the only guy they've smelled in 20 years wearing this, um, but it's it's definitely something that you're not gonna see a lot of people have. The price tag scares people away. But Creed Aventus, guys, some of the best compliments I've ever gotten come from Creed Aventus, even though I wouldn't say this is the most complimented of this list, it gets a ton. There are some that have been complimented way more than this, but some of the best, highest class people that I never would have expected to stop and tell me I smell good, uh, did because I was wearing Creed Aventus. I notice I tend to get compliments like above my social status because that almost makes sense. People, it's almost, I don't know if it's if it's a placebo effect because Creed is so elegant and Creed has such a strong name, but Creed almost sprinkles wealth and money and power and confidence into these bottles. You just smell the fragrance and people can tell it's something of class and something of high quality and it radiates through it and disregarding all of that it's a great scent guys if you like pineapple if you like sweet if you like a little smoky and black currant creative Ventus, you're going to pull lots of compliments save up for a bottle i think everyone should own one once in their life get a 50 milliliter if you have to get a decant there's no reason to go out and buy a 100 mil bottle based on this video but if it's something you finally want to try the hype's real i don't have to explain the hype to you guys it is the one the man the myth the legend the king our number 10 spot is taken by Creed Aventa. Guys, I was so excited today to bring you my 10 most complimented fragrances. I worked really hard narrowing down this list and try not to bring too many things on here that were super well-known and generic. Try to throw my own twist on it and some that I found that I was a little shocked that I got compliments with and make sure those are included on the list as well as some of the more high-end and well-known designers that ended up making the list too. Please drop down in the comments and tell me what you guys so far are wearing in 2020. What did you wear a lot in 2019? What's pulling you compliments right now? What can you not put down and is your everyday wear? I'd love to see where you guys are at and what you're wearing for the new year. 
If you're enjoying the content, if you want to be a part of the Founder Squad and be a part of what's going to eventually hopefully make this channel great and such a fun place to be, hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so you can always be notified when I've posted. Drop a like on the video, comment below, let me know what you think. And I just want to appreciate you guys for hanging out with me and hopefully you find something cool on this list that's going to pull you a lot of compliments and it's going to build your confidence through the roof. and. It's just going to make you a great, sexy-smelling guy. So thanks a lot for sticking around, guys, and watching. See you later.